this chapter, we're going to study logic and reasoning. In this lesson, we're going to apply deductive reasoning to create proofs. Okay, so this lesson here, we're going to revisit proofs. Okay. But deductive reasoning and proofs here. You're going to see a certain, certain style of proof pop out of this. We, uh, in a previous lesson, we looked at column proofs. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different. So anyway, proofs look like this. With logical arguments, deductive uh, reasoning results in spe a specific statement based on the facts presented. So with mathematical arguments, de uh, deductive reasoning looks at the facts, okay, looks at the statements, applies uh, mathematical ideas to the general case, uh, such as with the pick the number. So if you look at the when those previous ex uh, examples that we did in one of the previous lessons where we were looking at a pattern of operations and it said pick a number. Well, so what we did here is we choose an X instead, okay? And so that, that can be applied to any number. And then we saw that we got 12 every time. But you can do way more than just pick your number proof sorts of examples here. So we're gonna take a look at some examples of that in just a moment here, but before we get into that, just some definitions. A theorem, okay? A theorem is a statement which can be proved using logical or deductive reasoning. And I had mentioned that before, but here we uh, are kind of stating it explicitly here. An even number is represented by 2n, where n is an element of the naturals. So if you pick any natural number you can think of and multiply that by 2, the result will be what we call an even number. An odd number is always going to be represented by a natural number, uh, add 1 to it. Oh, sorry, a two, an even number plus 1. Or... For that matter, you could say 2n minus 1, uh, where n is an element of the naturals. I've seen people do that as well, where they prefer that. It's one or the other. Okay? Um, and then consecutive numbers are going to be numbers that follow in, in order. Okay? For example, consecutive odd numbers would be 5, 7, and 9. Now, notice when we're talking about consecutive odds or even consecutive evens, the difference between the numbers that are uh, kind of next to each other is going to be 2. Consecutive numbers, if you don't put the, the stipulation of them being odd or even, if they're just natural numbers, then they differ by one. But if they're odds or uh, evens, they're going to differ by two. Anyway, let's take a look at a, a, the way a proof would work uh, in this particular lesson. So this question says, consider the following statement. When two odd numbers are added, their sum is always even. So is this true? Well, we can look at uh, using inductive reasoning. Okay, to grab a pattern here. So 3 plus 7 is 10. 11 plus 73 is 84. Negative 17 plus 1 is negative 16. Notice in every case here, it's always even. So is that always going to be true? Is this a general statement that we can trust? Well, listen, we're going to use deductive reasoning now. So since our odd numbers aren't necessarily consecutive, we cannot use the same variable for each odd number. Now, what they mean by that is we're going to choose two odd numbers we're going to add together. Um, but let's say we're going to use the variable k for the first one, so our odd number will be 2k plus 1. The second one's got to be 2j plus 1, or 2 some other letter other than k. Okay, Because if we use the same variable here, then we're really looking at exactly the same number, and we're just adding it to itself. And that's too specific of a scenario to be generalized on. So we're going to let k and j be elements of the naturals, and now we're going to add those two numbers together. 2k plus 1 plus 2j plus 1. And then we get 2k plus 2j plus 2. Now, in order to uh, show that the sum is even, what we need to be able to do is show that that's going to be 2 times a number. But we can do that by simply factoring out the 2 out of every term there. So it's going to be 2 times some number. So now we can conclude, therefore, the sum of two odd numbers is always going to be even, because it will always be or the, the result can always be written as 2 times some natural number. Okay, so for this, this question here, it says, consider the following statement. When two odd numbers and an even number are added, their sums are always even. So is this true? Uh, I don't know. Let's, let's, pick a, let's pick a couple here. Let's say 5 plus 7 plus 8. Well, that's going to be 20. Uh, let's say 13 plus 21 plus 40. Well, 13 and 21 is going to be 34 plus 40 will be 74. Okay, that's an even number here. Let's try, um, let's try 1 plus 
17 plus 120. Well, 1 and 17 is going to be 18, plus 120 is going to be 138. So, yeah, it, it seems to be true, okay, that every time I add two odds and an even, I'm getting an, uh, an even number. Now, is that always true? Well, we are going to, and actually I want to look back at, at the, the, how they did it before here. So, I want to follow the same pattern here. So, let the odd number be that. We're going to do this. Let the odd, the odd numbers be, uh, let's say, 2a plus 1 and 2b plus 1. And let, oh, can you see that? Yeah, let the even be 2c, where a, b, and c are elements of the naturals. So now let's test this. 2a plus 1 plus 2b plus 1 plus 2c is going to equal 2a plus 2b plus 2c plus 2, when I take the, and put the two ones together. And now I could factor out a 2 out of all of this to get a plus b plus c plus 1. And because the result is two times a value, okay, the result is always even. So yeah, that's true. Okay, let's look at another example here. It says consider the sum, uh, consider the following statement, the sum of any three odd numbers is an odd number. So is this true? I don't know. Let's look at some uh, examples inductively. Three plus seven plus nine is 19. 3 plus 11 plus 73 is 87. Negative 17 plus 1 plus 5 is negative 11. So in every case here, it seems fairly clear that we're getting uh, odd numbers as a result. But let's see if this will always be true. So what we're going to do here is, again, understand these aren't consecutive numbers. So we're going to have to choose different variables for each one. So we're going to choose k, j, and m to create our odd numbers. Then we're going to add them together. So 2k plus 1 plus 2j plus 1 plus 2m plus 1 is going to equal 2k plus 2j plus 2m plus 3. Now, in order to show that it's, the sum is even, we need to be able to write it as 2 times, or sorry, in order to show that the sum is, oh, I'm sorry, the sum is odd. I'm sorry, you got to change that a little bit here. In order to show the sum is odd, we need to be able to prove that it's 2 times something plus 1. Well, okay, that 3 at the end there is a little bit of a pain, so we're going to split that up into 2 plus 1. And notice I could take a 2 out of every one of those first four terms, and I still got a plus 1 left over. So therefore, I can conclude that that sum will always be odd. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples here. So consider the following statement. The product of any two odd numbers is an odd number. So is this true? Let's write down three cases here. Okay. So 3 times 5, well, let's well, do 3 times 15. I anticipated the answer when I wrote it, but anyway, it'll work either way. 3 times 15 is 45. That's true. Uh, let's say 7 times 11 is 77. That's true. Let's try, uh, let's try 13 times, I don't know, let's try 30 times 9. Uh, okay, that's going to be... Uh, what is that? It's going to be 121. No, that's not right. Did I get that? 9 times 3 is 27. Oh, boy. That's what I get for trying to do things really quick in my head there. 117. Anyway, so that works. Is this always true? Well, let's let 2a plus 1 and 2b plus 1 be our odds where A and B are elements of the naturals. Now, let's multiply them together. So 2A plus 1 multiplied by 2B plus 1 is going to equal 4AB plus 2A plus 2B plus 1. Now, remember, all I got to do to show that something is odd is to show that it can be written as two times a value plus 1. So now I can factor out a 2 out of the first three terms and I get 2AB plus A plus B 
plus 1. And because it can be written in that form, therefore, the product is always odd. Done. Okay, let's take a look at another one here. Consider the, sta the following statement. The sum of any three consecutive integers is divisible by 3. Is that true? Uh, let's see. So if we go, for example, 1 plus 2 plus 3, we get 6. Okay, well, that's clearly divisible by 3. Well, let's try uh, Let's try 14 plus 15 plus 16. Okay, well, 14 and, and 15 is going to be 29. Uh, plus 16 is going to give us 45. Well, that works. Okay, let's try, I don't know, let's try... 80 plus 81 plus 82. That is going to be 243. And yeah, that is divisible by 3 as well. Okay, so now is that always true? Well, okay, to get consecutive numbers here, let's let A be the first number. So A plus 1 and A plus 2 are the next two numbers respectively. And I hope that makes sense. I mean, to get the next number, all I got to do is add 1 to A there. And to get the next one after that, just add 2 to A. So now, A plus A plus 1 plus A plus 2 is going to equal, well, there's three A's there, and 1 plus 2 is 3. And notice that I can factor out a 3 to get 3 times a plus 1. So yeah, therefore, the sum is always divisible by 3. Wonderful. Oh, and I should be putting, oh, sorry, I should be putting QED after all these things, after all these beautiful proofs that I'm doing. QED. Forgot about that from an, uh, an earlier lesson there. Just focusing on the, the proofs for getting that the little formality. Okay, let's look at this one. Consider the following statement. The sum of four even integers is even. Is that true? Well, let's take a look at some, some examples here. Let's say, I don't know, let's say 2 plus 10 plus 20 plus, I don't know, 46. What do I get there? That's going to be... Uh, 30, so it's going to be 78. Yeah, that's even. How about, um, I don't know, 4 plus 14 plus 32 plus 50? What do we got there? That's going to be 18, uh, 20, 50. If it's going to be 100, okay, that, well, that's definitely even. I don't know. Let's try... Let's try 16 plus, hey, 16, what happens if I double that there? 16 plus uh, 22 plus 6. Well, that's going to be 32, so it's going to be 54, that's going to be 60. So yeah, that is divisible by 2. Is that always true? Well, I don't know. So let's use deductive, re uh, deductive reasoning, and we're going to let 2a... Uh, 2b, 2c, 2d be our four even numbers. Okay, where a, b, c, and d are all elements of the naturals. So 2a plus 2b plus 2c plus 2d. Well, I can take a 2 out of that expression. I can factor that out. And so therefore the result is even. And there's my little proof. Oh, and if you haven't seen that symbol before, the three dots there, that means therefore. Okay, next question here says, uh, consider this statement here, the sum of any three consecutive integers is divisible by six. Is that true? Let's take a look at some examples. So let's say two plus four plus six will be equal to 12. That's true. Um, how about um, 20 plus 22 plus 24? Uh, that is going to be 66. Well, that's true. 
um, I don't know, how about uh, 56 plus 58 plus 60? Okay, so that's going to be, uh, what is that going to be, 14, uh, 174? Is that divisible by 6? Uh, 6, 54, yeah, actually that is divisible by 6. Okay, it's, it's even and divisible by, by th uh, 3, so that's good. Yeah, well, that seems to work. Is it always true? Use deductive reasoning. Well, we're going to let, let's say, uh, 2a where A is an element of the naturals, be our first number. And so 2A plus 2 and 2A plus 4 are the next two evens, respectively. So 2A plus 2a plus 2, okay, plus 2a plus 4 is going to equal, well, it's going to be 6a plus 6. And so because I can factor out a 6, the result is divisible by 6. There you go.